Today we're going to talk about division of polynomials. First of all, I'm going to take you back to elementary school when you, you, you learned how to divide um, numbers without a calculator. For example, if you wanted to divide 9,537 by 8 with no calculator, what you did in elementary school was you put the 8 on the outside, the 9, 5, 3, 7 on the inside, and then you went through each one of these um, individually. So 9 divided by 8 is 1. 1 times 8 is 8, and you subtract. 9 minus 8 is 1, and you bring down the, 15, the 5. 8 goes into 15 one time. 1 times 8 is 8, and you subtract. 15 minus 8 is 7. Then you bring down the 3. 8 times 9 is 72. Subtract, and you get 1, and then you bring down the 7, and 8 goes into 17 twice, 2 times 8 is 16, and you have a remainder of 1. So your answer would be 1,192 and with a remainder of 1, or you usually, or you learned after a while that you put the remainder divided by the divisor. So the answer is 1,192 and 1 eighth, or plus 1 eighth. So that was elementary school. Now what we're going to do is we're going to divide two polynomials using a similar method. So what we're going to do is we're going to divide 2x cubed minus 9x squared plus 7x plus 6 by 2x plus 1. Use the same philosophy. You put the 2x plus 1 on the outside of your division symbol. Inside goes 2x cubed minus 9x squared plus 7x plus 6. And then you use the same, con same concepts as you did in elementary school. But what you're looking at is you're looking at the first term divided by the first term here, just like you look back here at 9 divided by 8 was 1. 2x cubed divided by 2x is x squared. So on the top, and I, I like to uh, arrange my terms to be above the term here that has an x squared in it. So we'll put an x squared up here, that divided by that. And now we're going to multiply x squared times 2x plus 1, just like we divided, or we multiplied 1 times 8 here. So x squared times 2x is 2x cubed. x squared times 1 is x squared. And just like up here, you subtract 9 minus 8, you're going to subtract 2x cubed minus 9x squared minus 2x cubed plus x squared. Well, the 2x cubes will cancel out and negative 9x squared minus x squared is negative 10x squared. Then you bring down the next term, which is plus 7x. Then you go through the process again. You're dividing negative 10x squared by 2x, and you're getting a negative 5x. And you can just forget about that second term. He won't matter yet. Now we're going to multiply negative 5x by 2x plus 1. Negative 5x times 2x is negative 10x squared. Negative 5x times 1 is negative 5x. And you're subtracting. Negative 10x squared minus negative 10x squared is 0. Negative 7x minus a negative 5x is a positive 12x. And then you bring down the last term, which is plus 6. And then you go through the process again, 12x divided by 2x equals 6. So you're going to put a plus 6 on the top and multiply 6 times 2x plus 1, and that will give you 6 times 2x is 12x, and 6 times 1 is 6, positive 6. And when you subtract that, you get a remainder of 0. So your answer to this division problem is x squared minus 5x plus 6.
The next example I'm going to give you is one with a remainder. So now what our next example is is 6x squared minus x minus 2, and we're going to divide that polynomial by x plus 1. So we're going to set it up like before. The x plus 1 goes on the outside of the division symbol. 6x squared minus x minus 2 goes inside. And the process is divide the leading term by the leading term. 6x squared divided by x is 6x. Multiplying 6x times x is 6x squared. 6x times 1 is positive 6x. And then you subtract negative x minus 6x is negative 7x minus 2. Then you divide the leading term negative 7x divided by x is negative 7. Multiplying negative 7 by x plus 1, you get negative 7x minus 7. And when you subtract, 7x's go away. Negative 2 minus a negative 7 is a positive 5. That is our remainder. And a remainder, you add to the answer, and it goes in the numerator above x plus 1, that divisor. So there's your answer to, the to this problem. 6x minus 7 plus 5 over x plus 1 is the answer to that division. The next thing we're going to do is divide two polynomials, and one or more of them is going to have a missing term. Oh, I should, you should mark this as the remainder. All right, so our next example is we're going to divide 3x to the fourth plus 2x to the third plus x squared plus 4. Notice there's a missing term. There's an x term that's missing. And we're going to divide that by x squared plus 1. Oh, this one's got a missing term, too, that's an x. So when we... Um, write out our division, we're going to put placeholders in for those missing terms as zeros. So on the outside goes x squared plus 0x plus 1. That is the placeholder for the missing term. And on the inside we'll go 3x to the fourth plus 2x to the third plus x squared plus 0x, there's our placeholder, plus 4. And we go through the process like before. Divide 3x to the 4th, the leading term here by the leading term here. 3x to the 4th divided by x squared is 3x squared. Multiplying 3x squared by this whole outside, you get 3x to the 4th. 3x squared times 0x is 0x cubed. And then 3x squared times 1 is 3x squared. So that placeholder is important when we do this subtraction. 3x to the 4th minus 3x to the 4th is 0. 2x cubed minus 0 is 2x cubed. And x squared minus 3x squared is minus 2x squared. And drop down the next term, plus 0x. Dividing 2x to the 3rd divided by x squared, you get a 2x. Multiplying 2x times this whole thing, you get 2x cubed. 2x times 0 is, z or 0x is 0x squared. And 2x times 1 is 2x. And now when we subtract, they go away. Negative 2x squared becomes negative 2x squared. And then this becomes minus 2x. And then we drop down the plus 4. And then our last step is to divide negative 2x squared by x squared, and you get negative 2. And negative 2 times this whole thing is negative 2x squared plus 0x minus 2. And when you subtract, you're going to get negative 2x plus 6. And that's our remainder. When we get down to the point where the exponent on this, this final 
polynomial is less than this exponent here, we're done, and that is the remainder. I'll put REM here for the remainder. So you're going to add to this answer the negative 2x plus 6 all over the x squared plus 1 divisor. Hopefully you can see that. I'll zoom in a little bit closer. Turn this around a little bit. So you can take a snapshot of that or maybe just stop and, and, and take a look at that. So the answer to this division problem was 3x squared plus 2x minus 2. And there was a remainder, so you add the remainder of negative 2x plus 6 and you divide it by this device here, x squared plus 1. So that's the third example with the missing term. And we'll get to practice these a little bit um, in class. The next thing we're going to learn about is something called synthetic division. Synthetic division is an easy way to divide two polynomials as long as the divisor of the polynomial, what's on the bottom in the numerator, is in the form of x plus k or x minus k. That's the bottom of the fraction. And, and what I mean by in the form x minus k, it means that x can't be raised to any power. Like in the previous example, we couldn't use synthetic division because we, we had an x squared in the denominator. It can only be x to the first and then minus k, k is some constant. So if we want to use synthetic division, I'll give you an example of what we could use it on. We could use it on x to the third. I'm sorry, let me, let me start again. We could use it on x to the fourth minus x to the third minus 2x plus 2 divided by x plus 1. We can, use, we can use synthetic division on this example because the divisor in the, is in the form of x, x minus k or x plus k. x is to the first power and you have a constant on this. And this is how we set up synthetic division. It looks really different than what we just did previously. What you're going to do is you're going to set up a big L that's got a longer base than it does than it has a height. On the outside of this L, you are going to put the k value, the x minus k value. Well, this k value is equal to negative 1 because this is x minus negative 1, which is x plus 1. So you put the opposite of what this is. On the inside of this L, you put all of the coefficients of each one of these terms. So the coefficient of x to the fourth is 1. The coefficient of x to the third is negative 1. The coefficient of x squared isn't there, so you have to put a 0. The coefficient of x is negative 2. And then the constant term is a 2. So you're going to leave yourself room for another row of numbers that are going to go underneath here. And here's how synthetic division works. The first step is to bring down this first coefficient, no matter what it is, you just bring it straight down and you call it 1, or whatever the number is. Then you're going to multiply the outside number times this bottom number, and you're going to put it under the next number. Negative 1 times 1 is negative 1. And with synthetic division, you are going to add these two columns together. So negative 1 plus negative 1 equals negative 2. The next thing you're going to do is multiply negative 1 times negative 2 and get a positive 2, and you put it under the next number. 
and then you add these two numbers together, 0 plus 2 equals 2. Then you're going to multiply negative 1 times 2 and get negative 2. And when you add those two together, negative 2 plus negative 2 equals negative 4. And then the last thing you're going to do is multiply negative 1 times negative 4 and get positive 4. And 2 plus 4 equals 6. Whatever this last number is, put a little box around it. That is our remainder after division. And our answer is, these are the coefficients for x to the third, x to the second, x to the first, and x to the zero, which is just a constant. These are the coefficients of these terms. So the answer would be 1 times x cubed, which is x cubed, minus 2 times x squared, plus 2 times x minus 4, and there's a remainder of 6, so you're going to put 6 over the divisor of x plus 1, and there's your answer. First time you go through synthetic division, it seems a little bit cumbersome, but it gets a lot easier after some practice. So we'll do a couple more for practice to show you what, can, what it can be used for and, and how nice it is. Let's try this example. x to the fifth, whoops, you can't see that. x to the fifth plus 4x cubed plus 2x squared minus 1, divide that by x minus 2. And I'm going to ask you to use synthetic division because it's in the form of x minus k. Synthetic division says you're going to set up your L. You're going to put the opposite of this number on the outside, which is a positive 2. Then you're going to put the coefficients. x to the fifth has a coefficient of 1. x to the fourth has a 0. x to the third has a 4 x squared is 2, x to the first is 0, and then you have a negative 1 at the end. The first step of synthetic division is just to drop down whatever this number is. He's a 1. 2 times 1 is 2, and add those together. 0 plus 2 equals 2. 2 times 2 is 4, and 4 plus 4 is 8. 2 times 8 is 16. 16 plus 2 is 18. 2 times 18 is 36. And 36 plus 0 is 36. And 2 times 36 is 72. And 72 plus negative 1 is 71. So this has a remainder of 71. So because we were started out with x to the fifth, we have our coefficients of x to the fourth, x to the third, x squared, x, and then our constant is 36. So the final answer of this problem is 1x to the fourth plus 2x to the third plus 8x squared plus 18x plus 36, and then you had a remainder of 71 over x minus 2.